Hello, it's Teresa here from South East London. I hope you're all very, very well and keeping safe. It's a beautiful day here. I think um, the spring's arrived. Well, you may be wondering what these postcards are doing here. They're actually doing absolutely nothing they're basically just for decoration to save you looking at this grid at this mat we're actually going to make um, a patchwork block of about 12 inches square now I'm not making it up into anything on the camera I am making this for a specific class so I don't want to make it up at the moment I'm just going to do the front um, it's going to be patchwork using quilting we're going to quilt it and we're going to use applique and long stick some people call it big stitch or great stitch <laughs> some of us used to call it tacking stitch so that's how things sort of morph over the years like we know slow stitch as running stitch um, although slow stitch is associated to mindfulness and not a lot of people actually get the mindfulness um, bit with the slow stitch I mean I'm still hearing from people that slow stitch is you got to do it slowly and that really makes me laugh I heard it last week as well and had to say well no actually there's a bit more to the slow label but anyway I think we've been through that before because it, it's made me laugh before so a long stitch is just a running stitch only less than half an inch long okay so about a quarter of an inch to half an inch but no longer than half an inch otherwise it just becomes unruly and it um, starts fighting with each other and getting loose and so but I will go over that again so I'm actually making a couple of them but I will make one on the screen and just show you the development of another one as it progresses but I'm not going to alternate like I did with the sashi the sashi coast scarves okay so this is a complete tutorial or a, clue, a complete project on quilting patchwork and using long stitch I've also thrown a, thrown a couple of beads in as you might expect so, so the first thing we're going to do is collect our fabric these are the ones I've collected for my cushion now the cushion will end up at being approximately 12 inches square so that's 12 inches by 12 inches now the first thing I did was to cut the center square this is it here and it's seven inches by seven inches now when you're cutting your pieces don't forget that there will be a half inch seam allowance all the way round so this will actually end up being six inches square okay and it'll be the same with all the other pieces half inch seam allowance on all of them so anyway this one has been cut at seven by seven seven inches by seven inches there's only one of this size and this is the center bit and then there are four of these now these are seven inches long you can see it's the same length here by four inches wide so I have four of these two three four and as you can see I've mixed these up the colors I've kept to the same colors but I've actually mixed the design up now at this point I don't know whether I'm going to use the wrong side of these which is just as nice as the right side I think I'm definitely going to use the wrong side of this one I think because look how gorgeous that is that is really lovely that is the wrong side and there's the right side so although I could maybe have one of each um, in any pair I could have the right side of one and the wrong side of the other but anyway that comes later so four of these are seven inches by four inches and four of these which will be the four corners will end up up here 
Oops, you can't see, can you? <gasps> we'll end up at the corners. So, once again, I've kept to the colours that's in here. But, that is the right side. And I think you might have seen this before on other projects. That's the right side. And look at the wrong side. The wrong side of these colours, exactly. So, um... Once again, that's going to be a bit of a headache. I might shake it all up and have two right sides and then two wrong sides. Who knows? But these are, um, what did I say? These are four inches by four inches. But don't forget, as in the other pieces, there is half inch seam allowance all the way around the edge. So they will end up being three inches square. So when you cut them, you want four inch squares. Okay, so what I should have said, when you cut your pieces out, try to get the straight grain all going the same way. And by the straight grain, that is the bit that doesn't stretch. Okay, oh this is quite good, it seems to have a straight grain both ways. But anyway, so the first row, we want one four inch one seven inch and then another four inch now it's so we want two of these one for the top and one for the bottom now when you sort out your your fabrics and how you want to use them you're then going to put your right sides together so these are my right sides so i'm just going to flip that over like so here and pin it just pin that in place and I'm going to do the same here and pin it so I'll flip that over because that is my right side to right side and pin it now this piece here will need to be trimmed because it's extending it isn't a straight edge now these will be sewn along here from there to there and from there to there and that will be if you sew from there to there and from there to there you want a half inch seam allowance okay now I'm also going to do this for the bottom one and sew them at the same time so that's the first one and then the bottom one I'm going to do exactly the same that's lovely. I'm going to put those together. Now these are my right sides. Now which one did I use that? Right. Right. So these are my right sides. So I'm just going to flip my right side to right side and pin. Now if you haven't got a sewing machine, you can easily do this by hand. You can backstitch your seams, very um, a nice tight backstitch using two strands, two um, sewing thread, just two strands of thread, or you can do a very small running stitch along there. So now I've got my two pieces here, so that's the top and the bottom. I'm now going to put my sides together on my not my size, my middle one. Now the middle one is the one with the big square. My right sides together, which will be there. Lovely. And then I'm going to machine sew all my seams together now. So I'm going to so along there half inch seam allowance and then along here half inch seam allowance and the same on these pieces here so all the seams now have been finished and i've pressed them open as well so that obviously <laughs> is the wrong side now the next thing we're going to do is to attach the three rows together so right side to right side like this and then just pin start with pinning the seams 
together. Right, I'm just going to make it's a bit bigger now so you can actually see what I'm doing. Hold your eyes. There we go. So the seams are already open flat because I've pressed them that way. And I'm just going to match them now. So a pin there at that a pin there at that seam and I'm going to match it with its partner opposite and pin it so that should ensure that we marry up the seams so they match after we finish sewing I'm going to do the same here match the seams here pin them Make, just make sure they yep pin them like that now I'm going to put two pins at each seam just to make sure that the edges are down laid flat like this all right so the edge oh look that one's not flat is it so I'm just going to nip that out I mean to be honest it wouldn't really matter because this is going to be on the inside but there you go, the correct way of doing it. And then a couple of pins just to hold hold these in place while I sew. Here. Here. You can put as many pins in as you want. Or not at all. It's entirely up to you. Now that is ready for machine sewing along there. Right the way along. Well, I just have to make this a bit smaller. So now that is ready for machine sewing and it will be sewn from there, back stitch there just to secure it and I should have said back stitch all your little machine, all your little seams and by back stitch on the sewing machine I mean just reverse, reverse back it knots the stitch and then all the way along here down there and then reverse again, back stitch again to lock that seam. Now I'm going to pop this one on as well. I'm going to do exactly the same to this one. And then I'll machine sew this. I'm just going to show you um, the other two cushion covers or cushions that I'm doing at the same time as the demonstration one. Um, this one, the blue one, I think is far nicer than the one that I'm making to demonstrate. So gorgeous blue once again this is the wrong side that is the right side I think it's so difficult to tell but that is really beautiful so that is the blue the blue one another blue one here and don't forget that the centers will be quilted so this one will be quilted as it is so that's the other one and this is the one that the demonstration one so that's as far as I've got the it's all been um, sewn in place now with this one I've actually done um, a sewn a zigzag edge right the way round because this one unlike the others it's very prone to, to a fraying like this so I thought well while I'm quilting this bit here these will be flapping around and possibly fraying so I've done that now if you're using a, a fabric that frays as well you haven't got a machine a sewing machine don't worry you can do this with a very big over sewn very big don't worry about how it looks just over sew from one side front under to back so you get a nice stitch that really goes over the edge and that's all you're doing all the way around and that will help stop the fray so anyway this is as far as we are with the demonstration one all in place all ready now to be uh, to have the wadding and the lining attached now I've placed the wadding underneath already and I'm using this double I did try just on the edge I thought single might be enough but it's not enough to give a nice raised quilt effect so I definitely need two of these and this is a very lightweight 
um, very, this was bought for something else which it suited but it is very lightweight and you can see it's very very I'll move that you can see it's sort of very fine I can't gauge how wide that is maybe a quarter of an inch maybe even less but it's very loose so definitely two of those so I'm going to place that down now this will go on the top like that and I will stretch this over just a little stretch as I go but the bottom the lining which won't show because it's going to be in the cushion is just a remnant that I had of a very sheer fine fabric and this is all I need to put underneath the wadding to encase the wadding because as you know when you quilt you have three layers if you're doing English quilting you have three layers with trapanto or Italian you have two I mean they're, they're completely different but English quilting you have three layers and you sandwich the wadding between the two so that will go there and that's going to make it nice and easy on the sewing machine on the dog tooth this won't get caught up this won't come undone and get caught up and all sorts of nasty things because we'll have this stop in it wasn't going to use calico you want something very fine because if you use something stiff firm too thick it will stop the quilting effect it will be too thick to make a nice quilting effect so there we are that's the three layers and I'm going to pin these all the way around the edge and I will actually tack them on machine sew once I've done the pinning I'm just move that up a bit lovely once I've done the pinning I will probably tack, or no, not probably, I will do tack or baste. It's the same thing, isn't it? Or machine sew. No, I'm not going to machine sew. I'll baste all the way around the edge to make it ready for uh, quilting. The tacking's been done. I've done all the way around the edge here, and then in the middle, all the way around here, and then I've done across here and then gone round there to hold it really securely and firmly. If I turn it over, you might see the, some of the lines of tacking here. So that is nice now, nice and firm and ready to work. Now I've decided I'm not going to work in a hoop. I have the hoop here. Um, I will have a collection of hoops here but I've decided I'm not going to um, I know that a lot of people like to do their work in a hoop and if you're one of them by all means use your hoop or your frame but for me I just find the hoop often gets in the way and restricts my hand movements so I've decided not to use a hoop now I'm using an embroidery needle with a large eye now needles are very personal use a needle that suits you that suits your fingers and suits the way you manipulate the needle okay this one I particularly like and I'm going to use two strands of embroidery hang on a minute I'm going to use three strands of embroidery thread the thread needs to be thicker um, than we'd normally use so three strands and that should do nicely now anything less than three strands on this this textured fabric that it would get lost it would just seep down into this sort of mini pile here and here so that is why partly why we need a nice thick strong thread I mean we do anyway to quilt so um, three strands and that is nice now your stitches because this is um, long stitch or big stitch quilt 
So now I think slow stitch tucking, um, it sounds very grand doesn't it, but it isn't really. It's just like regular quilting, the little tiny running stitches, but they're big. Now your stitches are lovely and big and they can be anything from a quarter of an inch to just under half an inch. Don't go over half an inch because that really will be too big. So I think if you stick to a quarter of an inch to just under half an inch, you should be fine. Um, in regular quilting, the gaps between the stitches are quite important and they should be even with the stitches, okay? So they're evenly spaced. But with this, you can have long stitches and long gaps or long stitches and short gaps it's entirely up to you once again there are very few rules in this so having said that I think we're probably ready to move there was something else wasn't there ah oh, yes if you could keep your design even so if you're going to do say four rows of stitching here try to balance it with four rows here and maybe four here and here Otherwise, if you have an area that is densely, densely stitched and then you have another area that isn't, you're going to find that the area with all the stitches gets tight and it might shrink. That's part of your, your quilt. And um, whereas this, it won't. So you're going to have an uneven shape. Um, it will be well it will actually be pulled out of shape in some areas so try to keep an even balance with your design and what you're doing with your stitches alright so no big areas of stitches concentrated stitches against an area where there isn't now unlike slow stitch and our design work um, that is one of the contrasts but in this quilting uh, long stitch, big stitch quilting, we don't stick to that sort of contrast now. Now we're going to go for even, so we end up with a nice, even, regular shape. And none of that sort of out of, out of shape. Okay, I think that's more or less covered it all. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start here with a nice big stitch. I'm going to go round here and then round the seams. Now at this point I'm only going to go round the seams hit once to make sure they're nice and firm and solid for when I start doing the centre. Okay, so where am I going to start? I'm going to start here. So the, the hand with the needle underneath there's no big secrets here. Now some people like to put some masking tape along here to get their their rows really straight or a very fine pencil. I'm not recommending that. I'm not recommending the pencil at all. If you have mask, masking tape and you want to ensure your lines are straight then that's up to you. But personally part of the charm of this is um, like it's story if you like <laughs> wonky old stitches um it adds i think it adds something it adds character but it's entirely up to you so i've come through from without thinking i've knotted it and i've come through from the back there is a correct way of doing this and i haven't done it but hey ho look it's nice and firm so about half an inch to quarter of an inch and go through all three layers and we're going to just run them like this you can do a stab stitch which is a little in and out single stitch but I'm so used to doing slow stitch um, and hand stitching it's just sort of first nature for me to load the needle but at this stage there are no right and wrongs you do it your way the only way time I would say you must stick to the rules is if you're doing something really disciplined like a quilted quilt 
or if you're doing exhibition work if you're dressmaking and if you're doing examination work but our, our um, channel is about art so we can do anything we want nobody's going to tell you your technique your method is wrong because this is art okay so if you wanted something more um if you've tuned in for something more technical and more disciplined there are other people and they are actually quilters really good professional quilters on youtube who i doing. followed the scenes as i said i was going to do all the way down and across and around so there are two um rows parallel rows here on each seam one on one side and one on the other side so that is just the start that is the base very basic start to hold everything in place while i start sewing it now i've spent some time well actually my grandson was brought round. he's only four months old so everything stopped and oh i just love this baby but anyway i spent some time um looking at this and i love the this all this but i don't like this i'm not keen on that whatsoever i think it's too bright it's too garish although the colors are there they're brighter here um and of course i've used the back side so to speak or the wrong sides i should say of these that's all the wrong side um but it, this is the right side and it's just a shade or two um brighter um so what i've decided to do here here is to tone it down a little bit so i'm thinking of just popping those there now you'll see in a minute why i've chosen something glittery then i thought i've cut these out of a piece of fabric now i've cut quite a few and I thought this is nice because this goes very well with all the other colours around here. Um, all these colours are in here. So I thought I might pop that there. And then I have a collection of daisies. Now the daisies are white, so they need toning down. You'll probably know where this is leading to. And the center bits are the same color as what's on the background so but i have placed the daisies and the flower on top of the sequin the, the sequin bit here um and the sequins just shine through so it just gives it a little bit of a lift i also found these in the rag bag just three little flowers now you've seen those before if you remember the frida um project with the flowers in her hair i believe i used these so that's all i found uh, and it was just by pure sh um, chance that's all didn't go looking for them they were just there so i've put those there now i've deliberately put the edges over the the uh, seam lines just to add a little bit of interest and to break it up so that is nicely in place there it's still too bright so i'm not keen on the brightness um it's just a bit garish when these are muted colors so i've cut this out at obligatory tool and i'm going to place that down there like that leaving these pieces showing yes i'm going to i'm going to do that and then i'm going to quilt through them now the idea was to quilt across this in lines but i've since had a thought that i might just do a little bit of quilting around the shape here and have the lines just going along what the, the patchwork like the border 
so um, I'm not quite sure yet but I like the idea of pin just uh, pointing out or highlighting the shape of this flower because if I put the lines going over it I might actually lose that, that little bit of a design that's going on there with the applique so it would be nice to see the applique th through the stitching so I don't really want to cover it up too much so at the moment that's what I think I'm going to do and in fact I'm going to do that now so yes I'm making a commitment now to do that so what I will do is I've knotted my thread and it's three strands of embroidery thread okay three strands and it's about 30 inches long 30 inches long and I have knotted it at the back the knot's not going to show it's quite secure and I'm now going to outline the flower got the, a nice needle here it's the same needle now for English quilting you can just use a back stitch, small back stitch or small running stitch and I have seen this done with chain stitch as well and it's very very nice now if I make that a little bit bigger I don't need to show you how to to do this stitch for stitch because it's just like our slow stitch okay it's just like the big stitch that we'll be doing in lines only tiny so we're going through the three layers load your needle up and just outline and while you're doing that just have a think about whether to do shapes inside and I think even at this stage I think I am going to do the shapes inside so this project won't be as quick as I thought it was going to be done a small stitch all the way round and picked out a couple of the, pe the petals but at this stage I don't think I'm going to do any more in fact I think I'm going to take the flowers out because it's looking very fussy already um, so I'm taking all these flowers out Ooh, stuck to the sequins and I'm going might trim back oh that one looks as if it's been sewn already oh that one's been sewn down so I'm just going to trim that off make sure I'm on the camera there just going to trim that off now I think I've got a couple of options here oh immediately that looks better yes I think that looks a lot better like it is now I'm very tempted at this stage to actually cut the net off to trim the net take the net back to the sewing so I expose this now if I can just pull that back there mm. I don't know if I actually want like that whole square shaded um, it, it's not feeling right but this bit does so I think I might give it a haircut I'm not even sure if I will leave the sequins there I think first thing I'm going to do I'm going to jump in with two feet and I'm going to trim this back I'm taking the tool right the way back to the stitching um, I'm tempted to take the sequins back at the same time but I'm going to leave the sequins and just cut start cutting there and cut the black off now I was also tempted to cut some of the black from around here from the petals so we have <coughs> the colour of the um, flower showing through 
but I think that might make it look too fussy. I'm just doing this rough just to get an idea of how well <laughs> it's too late now because I can't put it back so um, that rough idea whether it's good or bad stays yes I think I'm beginning to like this a bit more it just didn't f feel right um, while I was sewing it there was something not quite right there now the question is shall I leave the sequins and sew over them or should I take that off as well yes I think I might I might trim the sequins off as well and I might do some surface stitchery in you see these small gaps here I'm going to make this a bit bigger not gaps they're petals aren't they but they're showing light gaps here I think in these small areas like here and here and maybe here here I might do some surface stitchery and at the moment of looking at that I'm thinking French knots to give that a bit more texture and that might be it once again at the end I'll have another look and I won't be doing the long stitch over this yeah I, I feel quite happy with that now I was just sort of doing this in the armchair actually and it just didn't feel right there was something not quite right so um, so actually the sequins this net lace was a, a bit of a waste of time because there are some sequins just keeping up but a very prominent sequin there and one there so I hope that looks better I certainly feel better about it so it's still the scruffy stage but I'm going to start the long stitch now the big stitch or the long stitch along the borders and while I'm doing that I should just keep looking at this but at the moment I've got a real urge to put French knots here and I possibly will do that but I need to start this because of course as you know the more you do in one area it's going to affect how you see and the development of another area which is that so until I start sewing the borders now or the patchwork I'm going to leave that <laughs> I think <laughs> it depends it really does depend but until then I shall hang it on the wall have a look have a coffee and then I shall start the long stitch here now so when you start doing your rows of long stitch just do it as you would normally do a row of slow stitch or running stitch nice needle quite a fine needle with a sharp point because it has to go through three layers of fabric now so nice needle three strands of thread and just right the way through now you can make your stitches as long or as short as you want to okay and that's all I'm doing all the way round give it a pull now don't pull it too tight otherwise you'll scrunch it up the, I've done three rows of this one two three all the way around and already it's lost half an inch in size all the way round so once again all the way round stitch the stitch length that suits you and just do this now until your border is is full of lines of stitching or as many as you want you might not want to have all this covered in stitching but I'm going to carry on um, you see the three one two three lines there I'm going to carry on now until the border is covered with stitching so here we are I've just finished and I put eight rows in all the way around and I did it in rows 
right the way eight rows eight rows and then eight rows along now because I've crisscrossed at the end I've got this really nice effect here on each of the corners there's that nice crisscross effect whereas in the middle it's just straight eight rows I've used different colored thread green blue cream and brown and just repeated those colors and at the moment I'm quite pleased with the effect here and it's looking really puffy really quilted well, I'm just going to make that smaller now so you can get a better picture of yeah. it these edges here will be trimmed off and here all trimmed off there but that is the completed border it's as I said it's nicely quilted and it is standing up now at this point I'm going back to the center bit I'm quite happy with this I will put some French knots in there but I think around here I'm just going to follow the shape around here with all the way round to get a nice quilting puffiness like I have here so, so I'm just going to start this the same way that we start any of our pieces of work not in the background not in the bottom of the thread pull it through from the back to the front and then just go through the three layers as we've been doing at this point and follow the outline all the way round so these will be called related lines because you're just going to keep repeating the lines all the way round so after I've done this first row I should just follow this and do another row and then another and then another um, I'm not sure at the moment if I will actually fill in the all the background uh, I'm not too sure at the moment I'm going to play that one by ear and just see how it looks as I as it takes shape it's finished now all the handwork the hand sewing has been done around the border and the applique has been sewn down with the net and the slow stitch is around here now it's debatable whether you call that slow stitch short stitch if this is long stitch then this must be short stitch I'm not sure it quite works like that but anyway so slow stitch stroke running stitch all the way around there just following that shape there now I've deliberately left some of these areas unsewn if you can see here and here um, and there I've left those unsewn just to take advantage of the puffiness I'll tell you what I'll do I'm just going to make that bigger if you can see this area here and here they're looking very puffy very quilted um, and I thought those looked lovely and it provides the contrast because between our plain areas of no stitching and our highly compact areas of tight intense stitching so we've managed to get our design principles into this I've also got areas here of raised against a few little areas here that aren't so raised so once again we've got our contrast going on there now I'm quite pleased with this um, well in fact I'm, I'm very pleased with it actually if I'm, <laughs> if I'm allowed to say that now can you see the stitching all the way around now the stitching is um, what's that one two three eighths of an inch so just under half an inch there um, let's try it there it looks wider there no three eighths of an inch there um, it looks narrower there oh no three eighths of an inch oh my goodness now that's to do with loading the needle um, and not doing the stitches one at a time ah this one is almost half an inch so yeah it's wider there 
Um, let's try here because it looks a little bit narrower there. Um, that's that one, two, no, that's three eighths of an inch. So it's the spacing without consciously, uh, consciously doing it has remained practically consistent all the way around. See how straight it is. Oh, yeah, that's not, <laughs> yeah, that's not straight. That's not a good example at all there. Totally not straight. But it doesn't have to be. Oh, look, it's totally not straight there. It starts off straight here and it ends straight there. But this part here is not straight. It's wonky donkey. But it doesn't matter because once that's padded or stuffed or whatever, who's going to know? What I'm going to do now to finish off the front, I'm going to add some French knots to the small areas here. Just picking out some of these gorgeous shapes, these little shapes here, I'm going to pick those out in the colours that I've used for the stitching. So, now for those of you who maybe have just joined us, I'm going to turn to a stitch book that we made some time ago and the French knot is this and it gives a beautiful, beautiful texture. So I'm just going to go through the French knot, tree bark in French knot, I'm just going to go through how to do a French knot very quickly, very easy. Once again, no secrets. Now because this is a demonstration, it's going to be exaggerated on burlap or hessian with a big darning needle with a great big eye for all sorts of wonderful fibres to go through there. And I'm going to use this wool, double knitting wool, knotted at the end. Now, as I said, this won't be used on the quilting, but it is just to show you um, on the screen. Because if I did it on here, you're not going to see it. You just wouldn't see it. So it's all exaggerated. I'll see if I can make that, well I can make it bigger, I'm just going to make that a bit bigger without making the screen go fuzzy I hope. So, not through from the back, um, no that's on the screen isn't it, through from the back like that. Now pull your thread, um, let me do it this way, right I'm on the side now so let me pull that down just a tad. Yes, I'm on the side, which for me makes it a little bit difficult, but I'm with the chair around. So, pull your thread like so, and let your needle do the work. So, you're going to just twist your needle round twice, because I'm using a thick thread, and go back, not into the same hole, because there's a risk of pulling it through, and just put your thumb there to ease it through and there is your French knot. So that looks very big and clumsy because it's wool. But it's so easy. Now another way of doing it is to hold your thread the same um, and just twist it around like that as many times as you want. You get the same effect. There are several ways of doing this and they're all right, and as long as you get the required knot. That one's a bit, I've um, got a loose thread there, so that I'm just going to cut that off. I don't know where that's come from. I think it's pulling it through. I've actually stranded the wool. So one, two, and down. Okay, and there we are. Dead simple. And just start there, through, let's fold that in, you could actually clip it so it's out of the way, I'm going to put a paper clip on there, like that, that makes it a lot easier, so one, two and back in the side, just like in the demonstration one. I'm still pulling the, the brown thread under my thumb. I'm holding it easy, holding it taut so it doesn't knot. And there is the first French knot. Right, just for the moment, I'm going to leave 
the French knots as they are as you can see I've put in areas here of dark brown and then I've added some cream coloured ones there now just for the minute I just like that look I'm going to make that a little bit bigger so you can see it now you're probably thinking well apart from the French knots it looks a bit different again yes I've decided to outline it in a dark brown blanket stitch all the way around there um, it was beginning to look as if it had just been dumped in the middle and I think an outline might just bring it together with the darkness of this color or the black the blacks here and the black here um, and I think that might just just um, as I say bring it together just make it a little bit more um, related to each other if that makes sense so this is the blanket stitch um, I only did that bit because I wasn't quite sure whether to carry on with it or not but I think I will it actually looks better here than it does there on the screen but we'll see how it goes anyway but I will finish that off I also think this area here is looking a bit bare now I do love this bit here as I explained earlier so I don't really want to hide that but I think maybe a stalk or a stem here and maybe up here I think it needs something else um, see this this is about a <laughs> long stitch quilting so I don't really want to go overboard and do the normal things that we tend to do on our work I want to stick to the long stitch quilting um, so I don't want to lose focus on all this but at the same time I really don't want to leave that bare looking as if I've just pulled it out the rag bag and glued it on so I'm going to play this one by this by ear and just let it develop itself and if it means putting stalks or stems or leaves here and here just to finish it then um, I will do but at the moment that's just an idea and as we all know it progresses and it takes its own form so for the minute that is done for, only for the minute until I finish off the blanket stitch here now I'm just going to show you recap and it's in our stitch book Sorry. as well this is in the so imagine that edge there is the edge here so this is the edge of our flower so we need to put the blanket stitch on the edge so we're going to come through here and once again this is all exaggerated so you can see it on the screen I'm going to make that bigger so notch your thread just as we normally do so we'll bring it through here got to be careful not to bring the knot through hold it here and then you're going to go in to the what is the flower the edge of the flower and you're just going to bring the needle up like this and the thread is behind the needle my thumb is there holding the knot in place so I don't pull it through and then you're just going to pull the needle through and there is your first stitch so you repeat that hold that down in place you can have these stitches as long or as wide as you want so back into the flower still hold this down and then bring that through thread behind the needle and pull it and there you go the second stitch and this see see what it looks like I, I hope I've done the right thing outlining it this way um, but I think I have looking at it like this I think I have now I don't want to make these stitches too big or do I I think they're, they're all different sizes anyway I've started off smaller but hey ho it's my work and um, if I want odd looking stitches I will 
would jolly well have odd looking stitches and you folks have the same attitude it's your work okay so you do as and what you want now this is lovely oh dear this is really mindful so I shall switch the camera off and I shall sit and enjoy this and have a think about what I'm going to do in the triangle bits what I've done I've outlined some of these petals in dark green running stitch or call it slow stitch if you like all the way around these now the next thing to do which will probably finish it is to put some leaves on here I think because this this is it's far too big an area it looks bare and I think by adding leaves it's going to make this look a little bit more like a flower um, it's been hanging on the wall for a while and each time I look at it I think it definitely needs leaves otherwise it just looks a bit blobby in the center so I think I'm going to applique leaves and we've done this before by cutting out leaves from a piece of fabric maybe that leaf and applying them somewhere around here but definitely here so I have a collection of leaves I've got these to cut out or these and these are all from little scrappy bits now this one I like because it has all the colors in there that are on here you might not be able to see it so well there but all the colors here are all around the edge so at the I'm moment I'm favoring this I think um, let me have a look on the screen sometimes it's easier to see on the screen than it is in front yeah I like this piece here so that is the next step but I don't know whether <laughs> as well <laughs> to add some beads on here just scatter some, not the big ones to, just to scatter some little beads um, yes I think I might do actually just to complement the texture of the French knots so let me I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger hmm I might do I think the first thing to do though is to put the leaves on and then stand back and have a look at it again and um, we'll play that one by ear but as I keep saying, next thing is to cut out some leaves and place them and um, we'll take it from there. Oh. Let's try that one there. That'll... And maybe... Oh. Right, what I'm going to do is put this... Oh, is put this in place and then have a look to see um, how it's looking and to um, develop this yes I like that and I'm going to leave it extending into that that patch there or well, two patches actually it's covering so I will do that and then I'll have another look now I'm going to um, use a very small might probably do a stab stitch there which is literally in and out in and out um, might do a small running stitch this bit I'm not sure whether to couch it from one side to the other but I don't at the moment I just know that's going there so I should leave it for a while and then I should think about um, stitching it and before I go off to do that I'm just going to show you this one how this blue one um, has taken shape now this is actually finished I'm not adding anything else onto this I'm going to make it a bit smaller I'm not making I'm not going to add anything else onto this it needs a little bit of a stretch here so I I will damp stretch it into place but anyway I, I need to get back to this and focus on this for a while these have now been sewn down 
and um, what I did I put the black tool over it as usual just little scraps like this if you can see that just to cover the that one and that one and then I've sewn round them all the way around the edge I went round this one twice in the same colour thread this brown that I've used in the slow stitch around here so I slow stitched around here or running stitch whichever you prefer all the way round here twice and that's held it quite securely um, I've done exactly the same here I did start sewing up here for veins on the leaves but it looked too fussy and I only got as far as about there and it was far too fussy already so I took those out I don't normally like I'm doing work as you know but um, I had to undo that so I prefer it like this now I'm just and all I'm going to do with that piece of tool there is cover it up completely cover it up completely and then after it's sewn on that is when I trim around the edge so a couple of pins there many pins as you like but just to make sure they're not going to walk so I think that only needs two one in each piece and then with your thread your nice needle not in the end and three strands oh you can't see that can you and three strands this is my favorite needle and it's bent I keep straightening it up with the pliers but I just love this needle for some reason and I don't know why it just sits nicely between between my fingers <laughs> right so in from the back I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see but you know how to do this so um, I'll start off and then I'll finish it off the camera okay so all the way around with your lovely little stitches or any stitch you want it doesn't have to be the stitch I'm using it could be a chain or it could be anything you like I mean a, ray, um, a feather stitch might be nice because a feather stitch would give the would give the impression of more foliage wouldn't it leaves so. right so that is finished oh a knot right at the end and I'll just finish off at the back and there we are so with a small pair of scissors I'm going to use my embroidery scissors I'm just going to clip the net that's hanging over I mean it's actually a nice effect to leave it if you wanted to sew that down but I don't think I want it on this one I'm going to make that a bit smaller so cover your eyes yeah I'm going to make that um, I'm going to cut this off around the edge I just think that um, the reason why I decided to use the net was to tone down the brightness of the green the green seemed to be jumping out and sort of bouncing off the yellow um, there was a little bit of a fight going on there between the colors and I thought no the green is far too bright so I turned to a, a favorite net or tool just to calm it down a bit and it actually gives it a little bit of dimension as well that is the main reason that I use a lot of net and tool in my work because it adds a, a bit of depth to whatever you're doing so I hope you can see that I hope my hands hasn't been in the way the whole time I'm just trimming that net around there pulling it back and trying not to clip the sewing and there we go so I think I just need to trim that a little bit there 
And then if you don't notice anything, you can just go back and like this piece here, you can just go back and give it a bit more of a haircut. Um, see that's sticking over, but I've actually sewn that bit down. So there we are now. So the applique is finished. I'm not applying any more f fabric to that and I'm quite pleased now and I'm really pleased I, I did put the net over the green because it calms it down a bit and it keeps it more in keeping with these dark areas here and these dark flowers here it sort of marries it all together if that makes sense now I'm going to make that smaller now you know, I expect you know what's coming next <laughs> there's not enough shine on it it just needs something, I think, to add a little bit of shine, but not too so, much. No, I, I think I might just scatter some beads around and about like this. Just a few to add a bit more texture and a bit, just a bit of a shine to it. And then I'm going to call it finished. So now I'm going to spend some time just sewing these down. Now the beads have been put in place, it's finished. I'm not adding anything else to the front. And if you can see, I've used very few beads down here, trailing off there. And it just adds a little bit of texture, a little bit of shine. And um, you can see the sequins there peeping through from, from the very start. They're still there in position. Um, so... I'm quite satisfied with this now and I'm calling that the front finished. Now the next thing to do is tidy up the back. So what I'm going to do, because this is to be a cushion cover, but I'm not make I'm not going to stuff it yet, not until um, I get I get it to where it's going. Otherwise I'll have too much stuff to take. So I'll be stuffing this later, but I'll show you how just to pop the backing on. Now, uh, we've done this before, but for anyone who's just joining us or anyone who wants a refresher, I have a square the same size as the front here, exactly the same dimensions. Now, there's no up and down here, so it really doesn't matter. Now, I'm putting right sides together, so right side of the back to right sides of the front and I'm going to pin it on three sides um, at this stage I want to know this is the bottom okay so my design has a top and a bottom so I'm going to leave the fourth seam open enough to get my hand in with some stuffing so I'll only be pinning from there three complete seams and just part of this one so let's just put this on right size to right side matching up the seams it's just of the edges I mean and where's my pins and just pop as many pins in as you need oh that was a bent one <laughs> did you see that one crikey and it went right away through so few pins now if you feel happier basting or tacking around this over your pins then do that right now I pinned around the three up here right the way across and then down here and now I'm just going to pin uh, I want and it's about four inches for me leave about four inches so now that's over the, the edge, but that will be that will be um, trimmed. One, two, three, four. Four inches normally works for me. So there we are. Now to make sure I don't machine sew over that, you see the edge there. I'm going to put some pins this way. So when I get to the pins that are now lengthwise, instead of upright, I know that I must start at one and go round and finish at the other one so what I shall do now is machine sew this all the way round and then it's 
practically finished and it hasn't taken that long at all so i've machine sewn it all the way around the edge now around the three edges um and partially along the fourth one leaving that four inches open for my hand i've started clipping the seams here just taking the corners off i've got two more to do so you're going to just with a nice pair of scissors just clip that off but don't break the stitching so avoid the stitching and the best way to do that is just put your thumb over it put your thumb over the edge of the stitch it <laughs> don't cut your thumb off there you go and then that is ready because i've already trimmed you can see that i've already trimmed around the edge i got a bit carried away since starting this i went out for a quick coffee met a friend had a, a little bit of a chit chat over a cake i've turned it into um, the right side now i'm pushing out the corners now i'm doing a very dodgy thing here i'm pushing them out with the sharp scissors i don't advise you do that um, unless you can get right in where all the fabrics meet and just push out but i should have used that but this isn't sharp enough or pointed enough sometimes to get to the the corners so there we are this is now finished i'm just going to move that about right i will press that into shape there because the, the seams are folded in a bit these need to be that needs to be closed up and don't forget these this i'm saying these because i've got the other one here as well will be um will have stuffing in now why i i should show you the blue one as well so that is that one um oh, i particularly like that the quilting and this these leaves here are standing out these are really really raised i wish you could see them i don't know how to do this so you could see them these are really raised this is really raised and puffy um, the long stitch uh, some call it the big stitch works really really well oh that needs to be pulled out that doesn't look exactly straight there so so that's the front all done and there's the back now that needs just a little bit of pressing and then of course when the stuffing's in there that will be plump but once again i won't stuff this until i i get where i'm going it'd be a lot easier that way so there we are that's that one oh, i hope you like it now i'm just going to show you the blue one as well and this is the blue one now i've got some books in here keeping it in shape so it's, it's a little bit on the heavy side so that is the blue one. Oh, the books have slipped Gosh. And this, if you remember, is just long stitch or big stitch. I like great stitch, but all the way along there. And that is the back of this. And the books are in there to just help this fall into place. Now, these two have been made um, just to show how one looks with a plique and how one looks just the long stick. I do hope you like that and I do hope you have a go because it's just so easy and it's so relaxing. And of course you could use any patchwork. It doesn't have to be this. Um, I like Log Cabin. That's my go-to patchwork. But do have a go and please put your work on the Facebook group. Enjoy your sewing. It's a beautiful day out there. Um, yeah, it's a walking out day. So I think I'll have some lunch and I might take myself off for a walk. Uh, to clear my head to think about the next project, which I'm actually involved with now. But I'm not giving anything away. Okay, so... Dirty cup. So... Take care, keep safe, and um, things can only get better, okay? So look after yourself, and I'll speak to you either on the comments or on Facebook. So take care now. Bye-bye.